your waist on it. You take it up into orbit on a you know big container. You stick a rocket on the container, shoot it in the sun. All gone. Nuclear waste problem could be solved in a year. Uh-uh, can't do it. No. You're going to have to live with all those piles and drums because we can't bring that out because the truth embargo must stand for a little bit longer. Then there's the issue of energy. We don't have to go there. I think you all understand that. Okay. Uh, I sent out a press release recently and it just basically said, look, you know, I had a picture of the Gulf spill and it said, does this concern you? If it does, ask yourself these two questions. I had a picture of a saucer. Do you think these pictures of some oil barrels run on this? Okay. Sent it out to 3,000 media. Didn't get a single call back. And then there's water. What can I say? If you really wanted to press yourself, dig up the Global Tens 2015 report by the CIA and the Defense Department report, I think 2025 projections, this is around 2001, Club of Rome, whatever, read those and then just, you know, hang yourself. Because let me tell you, it's not good. They're predicting wars over, you know, in addition to all the regular wars, and we have a certain set of wars, you know, that you simply have to have now, there's sort of like a list, it's like a menu. You're always going to have column A, but then you have some options from column B. In addition to all the column A wars, there's going to be wars over water, wars over food, wars over land, because we don't have enough. The principal source of water in the world is the ocean. We can't get it because it's salty. In order to take the salt out, you've got to desalinize it. The cost of desalinization is a fortune, so you can't do it, even though the water's all there. The energy physics of those saucers, if it's as good as we think it is, could drop the cost of energy production by 95, 98%, way down. What does that mean? Well, it means your oil bill, or your, your air conditioning bill could drop from 200 a month down to four bucks, that would be nice. But it also means that desalinization becomes viable, very viable. It means that they can build desalinization plants anywhere in the world offshore and generate vast amounts of fresh water and pipe it straight in. Somalia, Sudan, Sahara, doesn't matter. Arable land, more food, good drinking water, less disease, less children dying every day. They could do it tomorrow, but they can't because the truth embargo requires that that technology remain sequestered. They know a great deal because there's tens and tens of thousands of them and their reports are consistent within a bell curve and in the center of that curve is what we know. And when you look at that, you learn that as significant as their energy and propulsion physics is, their advances in biotech may be far, far more profound. They really know how to deal with that. And so it's very possible that Disclosure and contact leads to the access to that biotech, which leads to some profound opportunities. I was very sad when Steve Reeves died because I always felt that disclosure and contact would leave, lead to a complete cure for nerve destruction. Thus, all paraplegics could walk again, but he didn't make it. This biotech, man, you could go on and on. And by the way, it is actually one of the key themes in the television show V with that reptilian woman, I'm telling you, there's no reptile in there. That woman weighs 90 pounds if she weighs anything. She's a size zero. And so how they get a reptile inside her, I don't know. But the point is, is that, you know, V, they're given the, you know, the curing technology and turning it into an evil thing. Maybe it is, I don't know. All I know is that that technology is there. And boy, humans do suffer a lot. Their mastery of DNA, their telepathy, they're virtually universally telepathic. And we must be telepathic because they can read our mind and they can tell us things so we can receive and we can send. We just don't quite have the ability to know when we're doing that. Boy, that raises some interesting possibilities. All this is right on the other side of disclosure and on and on and on. Uh, that's another little metaphor. Uh, I'll tell you about this. Look, I'll finish with this. He lied. No, I am. The point is, is that my job is to get disclosure, to make it happen, to work with other people and make this event take place. And we're working every angle we can. Uh, other nations are being engaged, they're getting involved, the Catholic Church getting involved, witnesses are coming forward and so forth and so forth. But the, probably my biggest contribution is working the media. And there is the famous fable about, I think it's an Aesop fable, but I'm not positive, about the tortoise and the scorpion, and you've all heard this. 
real simple. The, tor the tortoise is about to cross the pond, and the scorpion says, you know, can you give me a ride? And the tortoise says, well, I could give you a ride, but you'll sting me, you know, and we'll die. And the, the scorpion says, no, I won't do it, won't do it, won't do it, I promise. So tortoise relents, scorpion climbs on halfway across the pond, the scorpion skings the turtle, and as they're both, you know, going to drown, the turtle says, why? Why did you do that? We're both going to drown. And the scorpion says, it's my nature. Okay? Guess who has a nature that could end this truth embargo? These people. The press. Okay? The press has gone along with the truth embargo by and large in a big way from 47 to 91, less so from 91 to 2000. They're starting to get a little better in the last four years. I track this very closely. But overall, the press was in bed with the truth embargo from the beginning. Very interesting story there. But the fact is, is that the fundamental nature of the press is to go after news, to go after information, to break stories, right? Essentially, they're in the truth business. That's not the case with Congress. The Congress is not in the truth business, okay? It's not their nature. The fundamental uh, 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 basis for members of, and politicians of Congress is to lie. Lying is fundamental to their job. And those that succeed are those who lie better than the others. Right? And so going to Congress and say, telling the truth, you're not going to their nature. But the press is a different matter. And so we're working them very hard because we think they're going to break at some point. And they're going to sting that turtle. Their job is to break stories. This is the biggest news story of all time. Now the principal uh, 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 thing I got going there is called a million facts on Washington at factsonwashington.org. And for since November the 5th of 2008, we've been sending letters to the president, the White House, the, you know, the president-elect's office, and then since June 1st of last year, God, it's almost a, 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 it is a year, the letters are all going to the White House press corps. That's these people here that meet in the west wing of that thing there, right? It's over on the right side. Recently, one of its longest members, Helen Thomas, just got retired from that, but that's, that's I've been there in that room many, many times. Any time, a couple of those people could break ranks. We've also got other political press covering other organizations in Washington. We're really working them, and we think ultimately they're going to bite. And once they do, the truth embargo cannot last very long. This is why we held the X conference at uh, the National Press Club this year, and why we've held a press conference at the press club after each event. It was at April 20 last year, after the X conference 2009. That is when Edgar Mitchell, in front of the CNN cameras, called for the administration to end the truth embargo after acknowledging again that the ET presence was real and Roswell was an, an ET craft, which of course confirms the technology development program. 14, Apollo 14 astronaut walked on the moon, MIT PhD, just another one of those, you know, UFO wackos. And that was a year ago. And so we're doing, we're, we're getting the issue close to, close to the White House, close to the Congress, pushing, 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 but it's the press we think that are going to break it. And there is a plaque in the, in the press uh, club, which I belong to, that sits in the hallway. And it was donated to the press club in 1962 on the anniversary of the 50th anniversary, rather, of the Columbia School of Journalism, which was uh, founded by, um, uh, oh, God. I, I, just, I just had a blank, the great journalist. Um, oh, Pulitzer founded the School of Journalism. So on the 50th anniversary, they gave this plaque with a quote from Pulitzer. And this is, this is the, this is the uh, uh, motto of the Facts on Washington, which is still sending letters, faxes, and emails as we speak to the White House press corps saying, start asking the tough questions and back them up, back up your other colleagues. And what he says in the first line is, our republic and its press will rise or fall together. I, I think all of you will know exactly what that means. You understand that when, if you had, if you had men and women serving, in, if you were the father or mother of men and women serving in the Army or Air Force, Marines, and they got sent to Iraq in 2003 because the press failed to engage the administration about what was happening, the press let you down, and very likely it's possible your child is dead now. And so you hate the press. And the press, press esteem and trust has dropped. In fact, in one year recently, it dropped to 15%. So nobody believes the press. They stop buying it. The papers fold. Kids are dying. 
the press and the public will rise or fall together. And so we need to get the press back in the game, and then they'll help us get back in the game. That's the million facts of Washington. That's the plaque. 